you through the best breakfasts, how to create it to burn fat, build more muscle, and attack your goals this year through the use of intermittent fasting. So I hear it all the time with my clients. I ask them, what do you eat for breakfast? And the answers come down to, I do oatmeal, or I'm doing juice, um, granola, or I'm doing just like, gosh, just yogurt with some berries or a bowl of fruit. And I wanna explain why those aren't the best choices when it comes to fat loss. So let's get started. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through what exactly I eat and how to create that perfect breakfast to break your fast with to build muscle and burn fat. And some of my clients, when I, I always ask them, I'm like, what do you have for breakfast? And they tell me like a bowl of fruit or oatmeal or you know just a juice and I'm gonna kind of talk about too is why those may not be the best choices when it comes to fat loss. So I want to first off say that intermittent fasting is something that has truly transformed my life. It has helped me overcome digestive issues. It has helped me lose weight, um, stay lean year round, and has helped many of my clients overcome things like insulin resistance, severe GI, SIBO, H. pylori issues. So I am a true fan of intermittent fasting. But with anything, there is a right and a wrong way of doing it. And if you're gonna be using intermittent fasting as a tool for weight loss, make sure that you are choosing high quality foods. Nourish your body. And I'm gonna be taking you through step-by-step step exactly, <laughs> exactly what I eat at every meal, um, how I help my clients plan out their meals. I got examples and we're gonna get all into that. Um, but a lot of people, what I find is when they go from just your standard American diet and then they hit that January, you know, I want to get on track or I hit my low and I'm having a lot of health issues. So I'm going to try something different and people may turn to intermittent fasting as something to help um, achieve either a weight loss goal or a health goal. But like I said, guys, do it the right way. And I want to take you through just what I believe through the research that I have done through what I do with myself and my clients just everything that has made me thrive from the inside out and get to my highest peak health so far. So whether you're doing 12 hour fasting or something like me, which is a 16, eight fast, when you are breaking your fast, you are very insulin sensitive. So throwing something in your body that is high in sugar um, or high in processed carbohydrates, it's gonna spike your insulin levels, which is that fat storing hormone. Having things like oatmeal in the morning or just a green juice. With your juices out there, a lot of the times they put apple, fruit in there, and they put a lot in there to make it sweet so that you wanna drink it. So while green juice is very, very good for you, juice is very good for you, very healthy, high in antioxidants, Consuming that alone for breakfast is gonna spike the insulin levels. And then you know what? I bet if you've done this before, you're hungry like 20, 30 minutes later, and then you're craving food. And that leads to whoosh, going and grabbing anything around. Why I say no oatmeal. So oatmeal is good, but watch what you're grabbing. Look at the packaging when you guys are buying things because a lot of the times there's the added sugars, added ingredients in there and then all of a sudden you're looking at that serving size and some of these oatmeals, it could be, you know, 16, 25 grams of sugar, added things in there um, on top of the fruit and the dried berries, they have all of that. And also I see a lot of my clients when they do make oatmeal, it is the oats, so the carbohydrate that's gonna spike the insulin, fruit, which is more carbohydrates in there, but there's not any really protein and fat in there. And again, I'm gonna go into why that is needed in a second, but I just wanna start off by talking why your common breakfasts aren't the best towards fat loss sometimes. So green juice and juices we talked about, high in sugar, um, oatmeal, Granola is the same exact thing. A lot of the granola has like the oats in there, which is the carbohydrate to spike, and then you have all the added sugars in there in most of them, unless you're making something homemade at home, guys. Now that I touched on a little bit while grabbing the juice, oatmeal, granola, why they may not be the best options for fat loss, 
I want to take you through what exactly to eat for breakfast or again, what I eat to maximize my fat burning potential, building muscle mass, and I almost call it biohack <laughs> my body. So first off, when you are creating a meal, okay, I always tell my clients, you wanna make sure you are stabilizing your blood sugar levels. Coming off a fast, I talked about you are very insulin sensitive. So having something just like a bowl of fruit with straight carbohydrates, you're gonna spike your insulin, which is that fat storing hormone, and you're gonna have a little boost of energy, but you're also gonna have the crash and you're gonna get the cravings and then get hungry, okay? So by having a carb, a fat, and a protein at that meal, Protein, number one, a lot of people don't get enough in their diet. Um, I have my clients track for a few days, they come to me and they are on the very low end. So protein is really, really responsible for building lean muscle mass after your training to help promote the recovery. Um, so when you're breaking muscle down in the gym, you wanna make sure you're getting plenty of protein to help rebuild that muscle fiber tissues. You need it for your hair, skin, nails, all of that. But also it's gonna help with satiety and it has a moderate to low insulin spike as opposed to a high one coming from carbohydrates. So protein is very important to have at that meal and I'm gonna go into protein sources and all of that in a second. And then fats actually have little to no insulin um, spike when you do consume them and they actually, the protein mixed with the fats, those two have a slower digestion rate than the carbohydrates so it's gonna help balance your blood sugar levels, keep you fuller longer, feel satisfied, you may have less cravings, um, you may like notice, you know what, I'm making it four or five hours now and I'm fully satisfied with tons of energy and like you feel good. So now that we went through how you should be planning out your meal, you should at breakfast be breaking your fast or what I like to do is I break my fast with that carb, the fat, and the protein. I want to go into what should you consume. So I'm going to take you guys through some different sources that I have. But now I'm going to take you guys through and share with you some of my favorite recipe ideas, vegan, non-vegan, to break your fast with, to maximize burning fat, building muscle. And remember, the whole thing of this, we want to plan out a meal that we are getting tons of micronutrients. We're keeping a little bit lower in the carbohydrates, higher in our healthy fats, high in omega-3s, higher in our lean quality proteins, bone broths, collagen, so that we are literally fueling our body with everything it needs to run at its highest potential. So recipe number one is going to be a smoothie because I know you guys are on a run and you need something quick and fast. So again, carb, fat, and protein at this, okay? I'm gonna make this one plant-based for you and I'm gonna give you an alternative if you're not plant-based. So in your smoothie, you want your base. You could use water, you can use coconut milk, or you can use any type of plant-based milk. If you do have digestive issues, look at the ingredients in those plant-based milks. Make sure there aren't any guar gums in there. Sometimes those can cause a lot of gas and bloating if you're very sensitive. Once you've got the base, you're gonna throw in your protein. We wanna make sure we're getting plenty of protein, guys, so that we're rebuilding the muscle fibers that you're keeping satisfied at this meal. So for my protein, if you're plant-based, I use this one. Again, I will link it below. Um, if you're plant-based, I use this one. If not, you could use the Formula One or any of your favorite protein powder. I just like the way this digests and this tastes. If you are, going if you're like not vegan you could also add some collagen to it guys if you're vegan take away the collagen okay then we want to add in our healthy fats so in terms of healthy fats that i like to add to my smoothies please don't be afraid of adding in fat guys fat is so good for your hormones it helps lubricate the gut so if you have constipation and you're on a very low fat diet check out that so smoothie we got our base we got our protein source. If we're not plant-based, we're gonna add in some collagen. And if you want some extra gut healing benefits, a little L-glutamine, guys. L-glutamine is amazing for healing the gut. Okay. Now, fats to add in. My favorite types of fats, again, 
hemp seeds. Throw in a good tablespoon of hemp seeds. Throw in a tablespoon of your flax seeds or chia seeds. This is gonna give you a ton of fiber, which acts as a thermogenic in the body. It's gonna help feed that gut bacteria, which is incredible for helping like act as a prebiotic in the gut. So any type of nuts or seeds you can throw in. I also love throwing in my smoothie a little bit of avocado. Again, it's high in potassium, it's high in fiber, it's gonna keep you full and stabilize those blood sugar levels, and it gives it a really creamy consistency. Other fats I like to add to my smoothie are coconut butter. You could add in some sesame tahini. Those are legit amazing or even any of your flax oils or your hemp oils. These are great to just shoot in for those extra omega-3 fatty acids, guys. So now we got our protein. Now we got our fats, carbohydrates. So I like in my smoothie to keep more towards low glycemic berries. I do, like I said, more of a Mediterranean diet, so I stay more on moderate protein, higher fat, and then what I do is um, I utilize, like when it comes to fruit, I like to do more low glycemic berries like our hunter and gatherers. So I like to keep frozen blueberries, blackberries, strawberries on hand. You could throw a good amount in there and that is gonna give you that little boost of energy, those berries, but then you have the protein and the healthy fats to keep you full and stabilize those blood sugars. And literally, this is a grab, Throw into your blender, click blend out the door. And a little side trick that you guys can do is I like to pre-make these. So say for instance, my recipe is a scoop, a scoop, um, a tablespoon of my hemp, chia, and flax, and my berries. You could actually put that all in a Ziploc bag, um, all like the frozen ingredients and then just keep them in your freezer with the berries, grab that bag, throw it in the blender with your, um, throw it in the blender with like your milk and click start, easy, okay? So first breakfast idea would be doing something like a smoothie. So for our next recipe, this is the ultimate breakfast recipe. I consume it every single day. Don't hate until you try it, guys. Okay, so we are gonna be making almost like a hash. At this hash, what we wanna do is we wanna have, again, our protein, our carbs, our fats. So, protein sources, lean fish. I love breaking my fast with a lean fish or my number one choice would be a sardine, guys. So, you could do sardines, mackerel, um, albacore tuna. Um, I like, um, you could do hearing, you could do cod, halibut. I stay away from tilapia, not good quality. Um, the reason I pick sardines, so this is my top pick, I do these every breakfast. Sardines are an incredible source of calcium when you're getting the bone in. Um, you're gonna get your vitamin D, which is gonna run all your hormones in your body. Um, you are going to get your electrolytes, your potassium, your magnesium, your sodium in here. This is like brain food it keeps you full guys like when i have this at breakfast which is five days a week at least i stay full for like five six hours like i am so good so you pick your protein source so i like to do sardines i will have my sardines and then what i like to do is i like to do poached eggs with it and the reason i do poached eggs is because when you are consuming eggs when you have the white fully cooked and you have the yolk nice and like liquidy a little bit that is when it is most bioavailable in the body and i do duck eggs right now they are so much more nutritious than regular eggs and everything i pick guys pasture raised um, organic wild caught quality matters that matters what you're putting in your body okay so we got our lean protein a good you know three to five ounces of your fish um and then what we're gonna have next is going to be our greens. And at breakfast, I like to stay away from vegetables, more go toward wilted steamed greens, just because you're waking up, you're first thing in the morning, a lot of vegetables are gonna have a lot of fiber, they're gonna be hard on your stomach, so we're going more towards nourishing our body with the fats and the healthy omega-3s and quality protein so that we stay full, we're burning more fat, keeping our insulin levels low, 
and easing up on our gut. Easy. So, got my lean protein. Then I'm going to, I'm pointing over here because I got my oven over here. Um, on my pan, I like to just wilt some spinach or some arugula. I'll throw some sea salt on that. And then if you guys are doing carbohydrates, um, you could add in things here like potatoes and chop them up like a little like hash browns. So delicious. You could do pumpkin here, egg, corn, squash, any of that. So I will wilt up my greens, throw some, a little bit of like potatoes or some like squash or pumpkin, whatever you want for a little bit of carbs. And then what I do is I throw my fish in with it until it's nice and warm and it's like a nice bowl of gosh of your protein of your carbs and of your greens and then you add your fats on top of it and this is where you don't want to just throw in a little splash of your olive oil guys remember fat is good for you i eat a lot of fat in my diet but i'm eating healthy fats fats that are going to be very very anti-inflammatory on my diet these are going to have low insulin response so you're not storing fat you're not spiking your insulin levels all the time so i like to add on top of my hash an olive oil an avocado oil and make sure if you guys are using olive oil you're adding in after you cook because it does not have a high heat index but if you want to add in your oil while you're cooking you could do the avocado oil some ghee for the gut benefits or even some coconut oil guys for the antibacterial benefits as well and the mcts to burn more fat so my second recipe my second meal idea which i believe is the best would be Number one, you're gonna saute or wilt up some of your nice greens. You're gonna throw in there your quality protein, any type of lean fish or your sardines or mackerel or cod or salmon, some high omega-3 fish. Then you're gonna add to the top of that some of your healthy oils, your salt, some like Celtic sea salt for your electrolytes. And then Row in a little bit of your carbohydrates, whether you're doing paleo, um, whatever style you're doing. And if you guys are more on that higher fat, higher protein diet, bump up your protein here, bump up your use of fats here, keep your carbs a little lower and adapt it to you. It always adapt it to you. None of my clients are on the same diet. None of my clients have the same macros. Even I am different because everyone's body is different. And I like to change things up to master your metabolism. For my final recipe, for everyone that loves oatmeal, I'm gonna give you guys a different take on an oatmeal for a good breakfast idea to burn fat and hack your metabolism. So, what we're gonna be doing is making a warm porridge, but we are gonna make this completely plant-based and utilize complete omega-3 proteins like hemp seeds and chia seeds. So. I'm gonna be taking you guys through, I wrote down my recipe just so I make sure I get all of it. So I'm gonna take you through, you may see me look down a little bit. So we are gonna be starting off with a half a cup of your choice for a milk. I like to do a coconut milk, those healthy fats in there. You can use any type of plant-based milk too. And just like I talked about with your smoothie, um, look for guar gums. See if there's any added thickeners. Always check your ingredients. If you do have those digestive issues, that can cause some gas and bloating. So pick your milk choice. So, so we're gonna start off with a half a cup of our nut milk. And I like to utilize coconut milk. You're gonna get your saucepan and you're gonna bring it up to a medium heat. You are gonna be adding in, okay guys, chia seeds. Great source of fiber, high omega-3. This is gonna keep you full. There's some protein, fats in here, like amazing for you, for your gut. And what we're gonna be doing is two tablespoons of our chia seeds with one half cup of our milk. You're gonna put that in your saucepan and then you're gonna be adding in additional one to two tablespoons of your hemp seeds. Again, complete process complete source of protein, amazing if you are vegan, whatever you are. Then on top of that, add spices. I add a little bit of cinnamon and around a half of a teaspoon of some vanilla bean. These are two great 
um, the cinnamon helps stabilize your blood sugar levels and the vanilla mixed with the cinnamon adds a sweetness profile to this recipe without having to add additional sugar, which is gonna spike that insulin, which is our fat storing hormone, which we don't want right now for trying to build muscle, burn fat, and keep that down. Next, so I kind of wanna take you through a little bit. You have your saucepan, you have your milk, you got your chia seeds, you got your hemp seeds, you got your two spices in it. And as you're adding the ingredients, I just want you guys to have it on a medium heat and you're just gonna be whisking it a little bit. You can use a fork. And the goal with all of this is you want the chia seeds to start absorbing the water. They're gonna start swelling up and getting to a gelatinous consistency. And this does not take long. You just want it warmed. You're not trying to cook this. We are just trying to warm it up, okay? So bring it to a medium, shouldn't, shouldn't take more than a few minutes while you are adding your ingredients in it. And then what I want you to do is I like to utilize pumpkin, but you could also do um, bananas or plantains based off of your diet and how insulin sensitive you are. If you're very insulin sensitive, what I like to do is add in a half a cup of pumpkin puree and I just mix that in with the chia pudding. Once all of that is nice and warm, I turn it off, okay? So listen to me guys, we got healthy fats, we got good fiber in there. We need to bump up that protein intake so that we have that feeling of satiety, so that we are going toward rebuilding those muscle fibers. So what I like to do after is I turn off the heat and I will add in a serving of, woo, I got a good catch, a serving of my plant-based protein. And you guys don't have to do plant-based protein. I like to keep plant-based in the morning. Um, this one has probiotics in it, just like I talked about, guys. And it has like a whole foods blend in here. So you're getting more than just all of your protein. You're getting vitamins, minerals, and gut healing benefits. And I will throw one serving of that in there. And if I don't want any type of taste added to my chia pudding, um, I will just do sometimes a collagen instead or do a half-half ratio. So you are getting the full plant-based protein in here, but you're also getting the hair, skin, nail, joints, gut healing benefits of the collagen. So it's your choice if you want to do um, either just a protein a blend of protein with the collagen, so a half of each, or just the collagen, no flavor. And then once you mix all of that in, you may have to add in a little bit of water because of the protein, guys, so just make sure there's enough liquid to it. And then you're all ready to serve. And the best part of this is the toppings. So now that you have your warm chia pudding, we have our plant-based protein in it. We got some carbohydrates coming from either our pumpkin puree, our plantain, or our banana. We got healthy fats coming from our hemp seeds, our chia seeds. Now we wanna add some toppings. And my favorite toppings to add to my chia porridge are gonna be number one, guys, frozen berries. I love adding any type of frozen berry to something hot. It just, it like, it like melts the berry and just infuses berry throughout the entire chia pudding, incredible. Also, again, I like to add in shredded coconut. You could add in some coconut butter. Um, you could add in, if you guys like um, walnuts or pecans, those are very anti-inflammatory, high omega-3, great for your brain. So first thing in the morning, having all of those brain boosting benefits coming from the higher anti, um, the higher omega-3s is very beneficial as well. And again, you guys can top it with whatever you like, but I like to top it with more of my superfoods coming from, again, you could add more hemp seeds, so more protein. You could add your flax oil to the top of it for more omega-3s, whatever you like. Like, it is legit, limitless of what you could add on top of it, so. I hope you guys found this video very helpful today. I was thinking about doing one in the future, really soon, about just 
every single thing that I look at in terms of ingredients and take you guys through a full shopping haul um, of me going through Whole Foods and going up to all my favorite fat sources and different protein sources. So let me know below if you guys would like me to try to sneak into Whole Foods with my camera and go through and take you guys through some of my top picks why I choose certain brands over the other and what I look for when I am buying foods in the store with like saving money and all of that. The whole point of this video was I just wanted to share you, with you guys that when you're trying to either heal your gut or you're trying to lose weight and burn more fat, stop looking at, you know what, I just need to be in a caloric deficit and be doing cardio. Start looking at, you know what, if I'm gonna use intermittent fasting as a tool, I wanna be nourishing my body through foods. I wanna be putting things in my body that are gonna fuel it. So instead of just having, you know, a bowl of fruit that's gonna spike insulin and I'm gonna feel hungry a few minutes later, I'm gonna put some quality fats with my vitamin D, my calcium, um, things that are gonna stabilize my blood sugar levels and give me the nutrients it needs and that is what is going to make you thrive. Our bodies are machines. If you are sick or healing from something, our bodies can rejuvenate, but you have to put it in the right place to do so. And that's what I work with my clients all around the world. I came from, gosh guys, I had severe SIBO, H. pylori, ulcers in my stomach. I was out to here looking like pregnant with just so many issues and I've tried every diet out there and I developed my take on a Mediterranean diet mixed with different aspects of like low leptin, anti-inflammatory and using different things like intermittent fasting with my clients depending on their goals to help them hack their metabolism and have sustainable results. Remember guys, it's not just about calories in versus calories out fuel your body, put things in it to nourish it, and don't hate on my sardines until you try this. But if you guys try it, let me know. Make sure to subscribe. I got new videos coming at you guys two times a week, every Wednesday, every Sunday, and I will see you on Wednesday with a new workout. If you guys are interested in coaching, I will put all of my information below for you guys. Send me over an email. Do not hesitate. I would love to work with you. It is truly my passion and I have so much incredible content coming your way.